We're going to talk about ear physiology now. So the outer ear collects sound and shapes its frequency components somewhat. The middle ear matches the airborne acoustic signal, so the signal from the air to the fluid of the cochlea. The inner ear performs temporal and spectral analysis on the signal. The auditory pathway conveys and further processes the signal, and the cerebral cortex interprets the signal. So the outer ear primarily collects the sound. The ridges, the grooves that you have are excellent for funneling sound directly towards the head. You have two ears, they face forward, so sounds coming at you are picked up before sounds coming from behind you. And the two ears help with localization, whether the sound's coming from the right or the left. The outer ear is also a resonator, and it results in the selective enhancement of certain frequencies. So the pinna acts as a sound funnel, focusing acoustic energy into the external auditory meatus. Both structures, they shape and they resonate sounds. And they resonate sounds between 1,500 and 8,000 hertz, with the greatest boost happening at 2,000 hertz. And if you remember from your phonetics class or your speech science class, the sounds that are most important for speech are around 2,000 hertz in between 1,500 and 8,000 hertz. So the ear canal is a resonator and it gives a boost to those important sounds of speech. The middle ear. The primary structures in the middle ear are the tympanic membrane, the ossicles, and the start of the cochlea. The middle ear is an impedance matcher. It's very important for matching compression sound waves in air, the medium air, to the medium of the cochlea, which is fluid. Without the middle ear, it'd be like you were swimming underwater. Okay, so you need the middle ear to boost energy that comes from the air in the outer ear to the fluid of the cochlea. So the main way it does this is by taking sounds from the tympanic membrane and then pushing them to the oval window. And it's the size difference between the tympanic membrane and the oval window. The tympanic membrane is 17 times larger than the oval window. So it's like a hammer to a nail where sound energy is funneled from the tympanic membrane, the large area of the tympanic membrane, to the much smaller area of the oval window. And there's a gain of 17 to 1, which translates to an increase of about 25 decibels. There's also this lever difference. So the length of the manubrium, the length of the manubrium is approximately 9 millimeters, while the length of the long process of the stapes is about 7 millimeters. So you have this lever difference between the manubrium of the malleus and the stapes that equals a gain of 2 decibels. Finally, you have this buckling effect of the tympanic membrane. And the buckling effect results in an increase in force of 4 to 6 dB to the effective signal. So when everything is to combined, the area difference, the level difference, and the buckling, there's a signal gain of about 31 decibels. So without your middle ear, you would lose this 31 decibel gain. And like I said, it'd be like you were swimming underwater because of the medium differences between the air and the fluid.